the classical dichotomy so what does it mean so when there is going to be a change in the quantity of money in the economy classical dichotomy says that it is only going to affect the nominal variables not the real variables so it will affect only nominal variables and not real variables and uh, there are several nominal variables for example money wages for example nominal gdp for example aggregate price level and changes in quantity of money it will not affect the real variables real value variables are for example real gdp right level of employment the real wage so in simple terms it means what that uh, money is set to dichotomize the economy into two different sectors one is a nominal sector nominal sector and other one is the real sector other one is the real sector there are three uh markets which are uh, which uh, which are working here so one is the labor market so when you say labor market you mean demand for money equals to supply for oh, sorry labor market is demand for labor equal to supply for labor right and uh, this this uh, equality is ensured by the flexible uh, wages then you have capital market capital market may you have savings is equal to investment and this equality is ensured in classical uh, market uh, in, in classical economy through flexible interest rate and then you have the money market also so money market may you have supply for money and demand for money so money market equilibrium is at where supply for money is uh, equal to the demand for money and here demand for money is only dependent upon income so it is your quantity theory of money it is coming through quantity theory of money right and this k is the constant of proportionality and this equality is ensured through flexible price level flexible price level in the economy right so here you have real wages w by p and you have labor demand and labor supply curve so this is the demand curve for labor which is dependent upon real wages and this is negatively related to real wages so as real wages are going to fall demand for labor is going to increase right so people employers will think that uh, it is easy to demand more labor so they'll demand more labor and uh, supply for labor is also dependent upon uh, real wages as uh, real wages are going to increase then the suppliers of labor laborers themselves they will think that we should be supplying more labor they will be incentivized to supply more labor right they will be incentivized to supply more labor fair enough then as far as this savings is concerned it is dependent upon interest rate like this 
and uh, you can write ds by dr greater than zero. That is, if rate of interest is going to increase, uh, people will be incentivized to save more. Investment is also the function of interest rate. So if rate of interest is going to increase, investment is going to fall, right? Okay, initially, the equilibrium is at uh, where demand for labor is equal to supply for labor. So you have the equilibrium amount of labor. You have the equilibrium real wage, which is capital W naught upon P naught, which is your initial nominal wage and the initial price level. Fair enough. So supposedly now, if money supply is going to increase, money supply increases from M bar to two M bar, right? So what is going to happen? So you have a, in place of M bar, you will write two M bar. This is just KPY. So of course there is an excess supply for money. Of course there is excess supply for money. So the only way you can have more, um, you can have an equilibrium is if the prices are going to double, right? So prices will also increase to 2P, right? So then it will again become M bar equals to KPY. M bar equals to KPY. So when the prices are going to increase, are, are also going to double. When money supply is doubled and prices are also going to double, then money market is going to come back into equilibrium. Right? Money market is going to come back into equilibrium. Uh, um, also, you have to understand this, that this is the initial level of output. This is the initial level of price. Prices now have increased double than the initial level of price. And this why not? It is coming through the production function. Right? This is coming through the production function. It is determined via production function. So what you do is basically you substitute the equilibrium amount of labor back into the production function to get the output. Right. Okay. Now think about it. When the prices are doubled, the prices are 2P naught. If nominal wages do not increase, then the real wages, real wage is going to fall. No. Nominal wages are W naught. Prices have increased. Real wage is going to fall. Now at this lower real wage, those who are demanders of labor, they would want to demand L1 amount of labor. And those who are suppliers of labor, they would want to supply L2 amount of labor only. I mean, uh, suppliers of labor will say we are not getting higher wages. So why should we be supplying more? They would want to supply less. But demanders of labor want to supply more. So there is an excess demand for labor. And what is this excess demand for labor going to do? Whenever there is an excess demand for anything, Right. The price of that thing is going to increase. Right. Price of that thing is going to increase. So what is going to happen is that uh, uh, prices have increased to 2P0. Now nominal wages will also double. Because ab pe you have an excess demand for labor. So the price of labor is going to increase, which is your nominal wage. So in case if you can double the nominal wage also, you will get the old real wage only. By initially, this was your real wage, no? Then prices have doubled, but real, uh, but nominal wages have not. So if you can increase the nominal wages also, nominal wages can increase. These are flexible wages. So when the nominal wages will also increase, what is going to happen? Demand for labor is going to fall. Supply for labor is going to increase and this process is going to continue till the market is going to come back to L0 only. Right. Till the market is going to come back to the L0 only. And with the same amount of labor, same amount of output is also going to be produced. So just think about it this way. Right. 
just think about it this way. So if you have this is let's say the production function. So this is the amount of labor which you have. So after nominal wages have also increased, then also your output, sorry, uh, labor is at L not only. So if labor is at L not, output is at Y not only. So there is no change in the output. So doubling of the money supply, what has that done? Doubling of the money supply has doubled the prices. It has doubled the nominal wages, right? Now, and uh, but there is no change in the output. There is absolutely no change in the output. Uh, uh, so, and in the capital market also, this this output is the this why not is the output clearing market uh, market clearing output. So, sales law also is going to ensure that there is going to be. Uh, equilibrium in the capital market. Uh, uh, so real interest rate doesn't change. What is changing is the, as the nominal interest rate, the price level, they are going to double, but the real interest rate will not change. This was the real interest rate, not required for this, but take care. Uh, so the point is that even the, there is going to be the equilibrium in the capital market as well. So, what do you have here is doubling of the money supply will double the prices, double the nominal wages, right? And double the nominal interest rate. Double the nominal interest. Rate. Let's say nominal interest rate is I naught. And this will double the nominal GDP. Nominal GDP is what? Nominal GDP was KPY, but when you, when prices have doubled, this becomes K2PY. So it has doubled the nominal GDP. Uh, so there is no, no real effects of this. So output is still at Y not only. Your uh, real wages are still at small W not only. Right. So this is what this establishes what classical dichotomy is. Huh? Thank you, Vita.